because this is a sicky beats tutorial we don't just hey put a soft clipper on the channel and call it a good day how does your mix sound before you've done any mastering to it the next myth that i want to talk to you guys about is the boost knob now the boost knob is very simply a volume knob what is going on beautiful people my name is sicky beats i'm a producer here in vancouver canada which is kind of smoky vancouver canada right now just because of all the wildfires that have been happening in today's video i want to talk to you guys my method for getting hard hitting mixes using some free plugins and one or two paid plugins as well. But before we get into this, I have a package that I've been waiting to open. And this is a package from a company called Odyssey. And I reached out to them to see if they'd be willing to send out a pair of their headphones for me to check out because this pair here, the Audio Technicas, I've had four of them over the last eight years. That's about a thousand dollars worth of music spending that I've done. And they've fallen apart a number of times, but I'm excited to check these out. Now, if you don't know about Odyssey, they make some reference grade audiophile level headphones oh my god these feel amazing i feel like this is like oh that's definitely metal and i think the sides here are carbon fiber and they got this thick leather padding on the inside so my head's gonna definitely enjoy that pause we got some cables to plug into the headphones that's how you know there's some good headphones man when you have to have two sides plug into the headphone and then uh, some cards this one is to download uh, their software which basically this is cool let me tell you about this what makes the software really cool is that you take a picture of your ear and then you upload it to their system which creates a profile which you open up in your software lets you listen to your music as if you were sitting in some multi-million dollar studios like echo bar studio Spitfire Studio, some cool stuff. So I'm definitely excited to check that out. Okay, while I set this up, I'm gonna play you guys a song that we'll be working with today. So this is the moment of truth. I just turned the headphones down so I'm not hearing anything here, but I've mixed this song on these headphones and I've had these for a long time. So I know how this beat sounds on these headphones. Wow. Whoa, whoa. My voice sounds amazing in through these headphones. You guys can't even tell. Anyways, these headphones sound amazing. I wanna start talking to you guys about how to get your mixes to smack. So in this video, these are the timestamps that I want you guys to look for. How does your mix sound before you've done any mastering to it? How loud is a kick? How loud is the 808? How loud is the melody and all that? The second thing I wanna talk about is um, some myths that are in music production community, like the boost knob and the soft clipper and how these are the magic ways to get your stuff to sound good, whether you're clipping the whole beat like because this is a sicky beats tutorial we don't just hey put a soft clipper on the channel and call it call it a good day right so and the third thing i want to talk about is some of the free plugins that i use let's get into this video and let me show you what a mix sounds like before you've put any compression any saturation any fruity soft clipper just a good old leveling of your beat this is what it sounds like Before I get into showing you guys how to get your mixes to smack, I gotta get a couple of myths out of the way because if you continue to do some of these mistakes, they're going to actually be detrimental later on in your music making process. Something that I've seen a lot of new producers do is have their mixes shooting above zero. Their mixes are literally just clipping like crazy, but they've fixed it by putting a soft clipper. Theoretically, in FL Studio, you have unlimited headroom because it's a 32-bit DAW, theoretically. However, when you use analog emulation, Emulation plugins, or if you're just working in the analog world, there's a certain audio range within where those hardware units or even those digital emulations of analog plugins sound good because by giving these plugins enough headroom, they can perform the job that they were created to do. And if you just drive them super hard over zero dB, let's say six, 12, 18 dB, yeah, without those plugins on your master, nothing is clipping. But when you run into those plugins, those plugins could be clipping, especially analog emulation plugins. Maybe it's an LA-28 or an 1176. They like a certain amount of signal. That's the first myth that I want to get out of the way. The next myth that I want to talk to you guys about is the boost knob. Now the boost knob is very simply a volume knob. It is very conveniently located on the pre-computed effects area so that you can easily turn the gain up above the limits of what this volume knob up here can do. So when I turn this knob up, the volume is getting louder. The tone of that kick drum is not changing whatsoever. It is just getting louder. 
Now, if I'm losing you, the reason why this boost knob sounds so cool is when you have a soft clipper on your master, it is driving the signal into essentially a wall and it's creating these nice harmonics that our ears like. Imagine if I told you to walk into a wall. Now, you would kind of smoosh into it nice and gently versus if I told you to run 60 kilometers into a wall, you would just go splat. That's such a bad example too. Don't run into walls. But if you do, make sure you video it and send it to me. <laughs> Soft clippers are basically a form of distortion and saturation. They gradually distort in a very soft, subtle way, which is why they're called soft clippers. Okay, so let's start talking about how you get these hard hitting mixes. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna drop on this reveal plugin from Odyssey. Now I already went ahead and took a picture of my ear and then sent it over to them and then they created a profile for my ear and I can go ahead and pick any one of these studios to kind of simulate the environment that I might want to listen to, as well as be able to pick the different speakers that are in each of these facilities. So Echo Bar Studio A or Echo Bar Studio B, this is where a lot of like the big hip hop records that I know from Bob Horn were mixed. Uh, you got the Osberger speakers, where you got the Eve, you can kind of listen to the mix between these two. Check it out. So right there, we were basically going back and forth between two different speaker profiles that they had captured. And we're just gonna close this down for right now. We're gonna reference through Echo Bar Studio B here. Okay, let's start things off by putting on a plugin that I'm sure a lot of people have told you not to put on your master, but I think there's a cool way that I learned from Decap that sounds really cool. So we're gonna go over here to the dynamic section. I'm gonna pull up my Fruity Limiter. Uh-oh, this one's the one they tell you not to use, but I'm a fan of this plugin. I think it sounds cool. So we're gonna make it nice and big. And here's how we're gonna set this up. We don't want to do any kind of limiting with this plugin. The way that I'm going to set up this plugin is I'm going to turn up the ceiling all the way to max. This means that we're not going to be touching the limiter's ceiling and doing any kind of compression. However, we are going to be doing saturation. And this is what I think makes this plugin so cool and underrated. We turn down the saturation just a little bit here. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the gain, which is going to drive the signal into that saturation ceiling. Again, this is the same thing that we do with the soft clipper and the boot not. We're just driving the signal into the saturation. Okay, so this sounds kind of cool. And at this point, this is what I like about mixing and mastering in the same place. It doesn't work for everyone, but I like doing it this way. I can basically make small adjustments. And for me right now, I feel like the kick can be a little bit quieter. I'm gonna pull it back about three dB and I'm gonna turn up the kick about two dB. And you can see these values over on the top left here. This is what we got. Okay, sweet. So this is a quick and easy set it and it's done type of method. This is an everyday thing that I might throw on when I'm being lazy. It works. It sounds decent. Now for the second plugin chain, the first thing that I put on is this fruity parametric EQ. And I have a preset that I've made for myself, which is called Sicky Default, which has a low cut and a high shelf. And then we're just going to hit play and listen and make decisions on what we think the song needs more or less of. That sounds really cool. And the next plugin that I wanna put on is another free one by Melda Production. It's called the M Compressor. Now I set this plugin up in the same way that the SSL bus compressor is laid out. I have the attack time at 30 milliseconds, which is the highest the bus compressor goes up to. For this example, I'm gonna go with, uh, let's go with two to one. So we're gonna set this threshold and just listen. Now the compressor is reacting a lot more to the kick than I would like. So we're gonna enable another cool feature that this compressor has, which is a sidechain function. We enable it 
and you're like, what the hell does that do? Well, we go over to this section here. We're going to click this little arrow and that's going to reveal a few other settings. These two knobs is a way for us to filter out what the compressor hears. Maybe we only want the compressor to focus on the snare drum or we want it to focus in on the kick drum. Let's listen to just the kick drum. So we're going to enable the speaker icon. Now the compressor is reacting to the kick drum. Maybe you want it to focus on the snare. That's one of the cool features about this plugin. Now we're not going to go to that level of an extreme. We just want to remove a little bit of that kick drum. So we're going to go up to like 150 hertz. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool to me. So the next plugin that I want to go to is the final plugin that I would put on this chain, which is a low key plugin that I've been using for the last couple of months. So this one is called Free Clip and it's by a company called Ven Audio. Now this plugin is very similar to the Fruity Soft Clipper, but you get a lot more soft clipping curves. So you got the Hyperbolic 10, which is my favorite one to go with, or you can go into the Arc Tangent or Quintenic, Cubic, whatever. And we're just going to hit play, but we're going to build on the principle of boosting our kick drum into the Fruity Soft Clipper. But in this case, we're going to drive the input gain right into the ceiling of the Soft Clipper to get a similar result. Check it out. And then we're just gonna turn down the gain to kind of level match everything. Take a look at that. Take a look at the master volume meter. We're hitting a little like minus 10 maybe. And if I turn it back on, we're hitting minus 12, but it sounds a little bit louder, doesn't it? Perceived loudness and soft clipping. Okay, I lied. So one more plugin that we're gonna put on here. And again, we're gonna put on the Fruity Soft Clipper. And this time we're going to set the ceiling to 1.3. You can see the 1.3 value at the top left corner here as I turn this knob and we're just gonna set it at 1.3. And then we're just gonna turn up the purple knob, the gain knob until the audio signal is just tickling the ceiling. That is our second plugin chain. Now the next plugin chain I have isn't exactly free, but it costs $20, which is a pretty reasonable price to pay for such a powerful tool. And that tool is Ozone Elements, which is $19 right now. You save about $110. So that'll be a link in the description. Now I'm going to be using the full version of Ozone 9, but we're gonna make this process super quick and easy because we're gonna be using the Master Assistant, which is its AI machine learning feature that allows it to master for you based on the audio that it's listening in on. To set it up, we just go over here to the top, we click Master Assistant, and it'll ask us which modules we wanna use. We're gonna click Modern. You can go with Vintage. I'm not sure if the Elements version comes with this, but we're gonna go with Modern, and then we're gonna click Medium, and then we want to go, I'm gonna go for CD quality. And then we're gonna hit Next, and then it's gonna wait for us to play the audio, so we're gonna hit Play. It's going to go ahead and analyze the audio, detect any dynamic changes, any volume changes within the song, and then it's gonna set a maximizing limiter, a final a limiter to bring the volume up. There it is. All right. And we just hit accept. And there's our song that's mastered. Now keep in mind that I was playing the main chorus of my beats. So the master assistant might be reacting differently if you're playing the verse of your song or the pre-chorus. I wanna show you guys all three versions of this. And I wanna know which one of the three versions of this mastering change that I showed you, you guys liked best. So let's listen to them together and see which one we all like.
Okay, I know which one I like. So between the three different versions, the first chain kind of sounds a little more crunchy, a little more compressed, and a little more fuller sounding. Chain number two, the yellow one, sounds a little bit more mid-rangey, slightly more punchy. And then chain number three is probably the most dynamic of them all. It's probably the most punchy of them all too. And personally, I like chain number one just because I'm a fan of the little crunchier of a sound. Now I want to know what you guys think. So leave a comment letting me know if you like chain number one, two, or three. And I want to thank Chris over at Odyssey for sending me these headphones. Now I know you guys couldn't hear the difference on your end, but the mixes that I make for these videos or for artists are gonna be a lot more better because I'm making these decisions based on some of the best headphones that are out because oftentimes we get by with two or $300 headphones. But if you're someone who's in the market for some truly professional headphones with the highest quality, you can't go wrong with these, especially considering the high quality materials, the build quality, and the name that's revered amongst the most demanding audio purists, which makes it an easy recommendation from me to you. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't downloaded the free version of Pandora, check it out because in the next couple of weeks, I'm gonna have another free kit. I think it's gonna be called Monarch. Be on the lookout for that. Till then. Peace.